These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's see if we can work out a good mechanism for this reaction. Good. Number of your carbons? Oh. Notice how just the act of trying to number the carbons points out mistakes. That's always a really good habit to put in some numbers there. But you correctly saw that this amine is a nucleophile. So we're going to have a nucleophilic attack on this carboxylic acid. Now, is this going to be gaining protons or losing protons? I think you drew it fine, but is this going to try to gain a proton or lose a proton? It should lose it. And who's going to gain the proton? The oxygen. So this is the one that needs the lone pair oh. to gain the proton. Remember that the arrow here does not show which way the proton is moving. It shows which way the electrons are moving. The electrons are moving towards the proton. A common mistake would be to show the arrow showing the height of the proton moving towards the oxygen. But we want the arrow to show the electrons moving towards the proton. It's good that you saw that we need the proton transfer there. That's fun. Like I said, I think you've made a lot of progress on these reactions. I said a lot of students tend to, to get confused about who the leaving group is, but it doesn't look like they're ever getting confused about that. You're always choosing the right leaving group. So here, this is the leaving group. And you saw that it would be best if we could protonate this to make it into a better leaving group. Well, there's a convenient way to protonate this by taking the proton that this nitrogen doesn't need anymore. So it's good that you're looking for that step as well. Just make sure that you see this is the right electron pushing arrows for this step. Now, what type of function group is this? Acid. And this is? Our I means nucleophiles. They are. They That's why this step makes sense. It makes sense for an amine to attack a carboxylic acid. And then we produced an, what type of functional group is this? Amide. Yeah, an amide, or amide. Good. So, how do we produce amides? Where do amide bonds come from? Well, amines attacking carbonyls, like amines attacking carboxylic acids. Now, I should say, this reaction doesn't work that well because there's some competing reactions. There are some competing reactions here, so there can be some complications. But I don't want to get into those right now. One of the things that can happen here is that the amine can attack the carboxylic acid and form an amide bond. That's all we really need to talk about as far as peptide and chemistry is concerned.
This is the general form of an amino acid. Here's our general form for an amino acid. What type of functional group is this? Yeah, that's why it's called an amino acid, because it has an amine group. And what type of functional group is this? That's why it's called an amino acid, because it has an acid group as well. So the name amino acid is very logical. There's an amine group and a carboxylic acid group. Now, what would be a good name for this nitrogen? Well, this is the, well, it's the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. What would be a good name for this carbon? This is the carboxy carbon. Mm -hmm. What would be a good name for this carbon, though? This is the alpha carbon. That's a very important name. It's really helpful to always label the alpha carbon. The alpha carbon, notice, who's the alpha carbon attached to? It's between the carboxy carbon and the nitrogen. The alpha carbon is between the carboxy carbon and the nitrogen. Between the alpha car it's between the alpha carbon is between the carboxy carbon and the nitrogen. And it's attached to the side chain. Remember, there's really about 20 different amino acids. How can there be 20 different amino acids if they all have the same structure? Because they all have different R groups. They all have different side chains. All the amino acids are the same, pretty much, except that they have different side chains. By the way, there's also a hidden hydrogen on this alpha carbon, but we usually don't care about that, so we usually leave that out. Well, now, let's draw what the structure would be for alanine. So on the test, you're going to be given a table of all the amino acids. So if you have your test book with you, we can take a look at that table and start getting practice with interpreting it. side chain will look like. Well, here's alanine. Now this tells us the R group, the side chain. So I'm going to erase this R group and I'm going to replace it with CH3. Therefore, this is the structure for alanine. Right now I'd like you to draw the structure for isoleucine. is figuring out which of these carbons is attached to the alpha carbon. That shouldn't be too hard. Okay, well, generally speaking, they're going to put the carbon that's attached to the side chain towards the left, oh. not towards the right. But on top of that, the other way to tell is, how many bonds does this carbon have? Four. Oh, sorry. This one has four bonds total. Yeah. Which means it can't possibly be attached to the alpha carbon, too. Right. But how many bonds does this carbon have? Two, let me see. Yeah, I'm sure this. I think, actually, you see three. So. Oh, yeah. In the table, this is how they drew the R group for isoleucine. Well, if we count carefully, this carbon has three bonds showing. This bond to this carbon, this hydrogen, but it's also bonded to this carbon, right? That's just the convention for condensed notation, but it still doesn't have four bonds. So this must be the carbon that's attached to the alpha carbon. This must be the carbon that's attached to the alpha carbon. So if you wanted to use bond line notation, you could write that like this. Or maybe it would be safer to stick with the condensed notation. And write it like this. <laughs> 